Hello everyone, my name is Desi, and I love Warhammer. It seems like only yesterday I was in the hobby store with my dad, buying a box of Skeleton Warriors for Warhammer Fantasy. The start of a massive hyperfixation on these dark, fantastical worlds made by Games Workshop. Now, Warhammer Fantasy has been given the boot by GW, and uh, the community reacted very, very well to that change. But they did create one of my favorite fictional universes that hasn't been touched yet. Warhammer 40k. I don't think I need to explain to most of you what 40k is since I'm assuming that most of you watching this video are Warhammer fans. For those of you who uh, aren't Warhammer fans and this is your first time ever being introduced to the Warhammer universe, uh, basically here's a brief recap. Uh, big gold man, emperor, emperor make Primarch sons, uh, Primarch sons have daddy issues, chaos, evil gods come corrupt. Primarchs, War, 7 trillion dead, uh, Warhammer, oh yeah, there's also Bugs, Orcs, Evangelion Blue People, Trans Robots, Filthy Elves, Dwarves, uh, and Darkness, Sadness, it's Warhammer 40k. You will die. To be completely honest, I could never properly tell you all the moving parts of Warhammer, since this is a massive, massive universe with incredibly complex factions with tons and tons of lore. So if you actually want to know the inner workings of Warhammer, there are plenty of videos and books and literature that you can read to understand. But I can tell you what my main draw and what I think the main draw for most people is for the 40k world. And I think it's three things. The gritty, dark setting with the awesome eldritch monster designs and badass super soldiers, the epic scale of the battles and monkey brain neuron activation where gun go boom, and uh, Tau Rule 34 art. I think all these things is what has made Warhammer 40k so popular in the last decade. Warhammer has tons of media around it. Lots of great books, lots of great video games, lots of great animations that talented artists poured hours of their life into making for the community, and then Games Workshop sent them all cease and desists. <sighs> I promise this isn't just going to be me ranting about Games Workshop's uh, shady business practices. Today we're going to be talking about something I really like about Warhammer, the video games. There's been tons of video games made for Warhammer 40k. Lots of them are bad, unfortunately. There's a lot of half-baked, poorly executed Warhammer products on Steam, but some of them are really fun. A lot of them still have glaring issues, but there are some pretty damn good Warhammer 40k games. And one of them is the subject of today's video, Dark Tide. It is the 41st millennium. For 10,000 years, the Imperium has dominated the galaxy. There is only war. Every human soul, from the most highborn lord to the most basic servitor, is dedicated to the service of the God Emperor of Mankind. Now, Dark Tide was definitely amongst the uh, ranks of the half-baked 40k games upon release, but in the recent months it has gone a lot of great updates and now it's a fully-fledged video game and it's a lot of fun. Today is going to be a rambling video about Dark Tide. Warhammer is one of my favorite things ever. I love this world, its characters, its stupid wacky lore, and I will use Dark Tide as a catalyst to show you why all of this world is truly special. Dark Tide is a first-person horde shooter developed by Fat Shark, a game similar to Left 4 Dead, Vermintide, also made by Fat Shark, or <laughs> Back for Blood. 
It captures that dirty, grimy feel of the Imperium cities and lowly soldiers as you play as human rejects and criminals tasked with clearing out a Nurgle cult. You've got four different classes, the Veteran, Ogren, Zealot, and Psyker. All these classes having incredibly fun and varied skill trees that allow you to heavily customize your faithful cannon fodder. You aren't the poster boy space marines in this game, you're in the guard, son. Or I guess technically not in the guard, you're just a bunch of criminals sent to, uh, you know, on... Oh shit, I can't say that word. Uh, unaliving missions. Right, forgot YouTube doesn't like the, uh, the S word. Um, Tertium is the hive world that you have been sent to clear of the infection of chaos. Hive cities are basically 100 LAs stacked on top of each other, uh, if you need a visual for how bad these places are. First thing I want to talk about with Dark Tide is how Fat Shark has nailed the aesthetic of Warhammer. Like I said previously, a huge draw for this universe is its dirty, gothic, evil art style with skulls all over the place. The Morning Star, the ship that serves as your hub, is a beautiful, beautiful place. You got golden statues, pipes and wires leading to god knows where, and lots of skulls. Because if there's one thing about Warhammer artists, they love putting skulls everywhere. It's here on the Morning Star hub that you can do all of your standard video game stuff, like upgrade and buy gear, customize characters, do daily tasks, you know, the standard video game progression stuff. But we want to actually talk about the fun part, the gameplay. Dark Tide, like all horde shooters, throws tons of enemies at you in giant waves, and your team of four have to survive the onslaught of angry chaos lads. The chaos cult you are facing is Nurgle, which is my second favorite chaos god, right behind incel Bloodman Corn. Nurgle makes the most sense for a zombie horde shooter, no doubt, and there are a wide variety of enemies in this game. You got Pox Walkers, which are your standard zombie fodder. They explode into maggots whenever you kill them, which is uh, absolutely disgusting. I love it. You got simple chaos cultists with auto guns or melee. You got renegade guardsmen with las guns. And we can talk about the fun specialist enemies. There are tougher chaos cultists like ragers, gunners, and the stupid fucking Weber dude. I hate this guy so much. These specialist enemies all serve that standard horde shooter need. Uh, to have more elite enemies to disrupt your party's composition. Bombers and flamers force you out of cover, ragers hit you really good, snipers pick people off out of cover, webbers suck dick, yada yada yada, there's a big ogren with a big shield that, you know, does ogren things. There are no plague marines in this game, thank god, because you would die a horrible, horrible death if there were plague marines on this planet. But we have things arguably worse than plague marines with the boss enemies. You got chaos spawn, Plague Ogrens, Beasts of Nurgle, and finally the boss Chaos Champions, which are specialist final bosses at the end of certain levels. It's funny because arguably some of these things are way worse to fight than a Plague Marine. I don't know about you, but I'd rather go up against a Stinky Marine boy than whatever the fuck this is. And I would especially want to fight a Nurgle Marine instead of a Demon Host, an incredibly dangerous boss enemy you and your party must avoid unless you want to get booty ripped into the warp. These disturbing, muttering abominations are basically the witches of Dark Tide, and while killable, it's almost impossible to not lose one or two of your squad members to one in a fight. Also, to my knowledge, killing a demon host gives you absolutely nothing, so it's best to just uh, avoid these things at all cost. To kill all these chaos scum, you're gonna need some weapons, and Dark Tide has a ton to pick from. You've got las guns, auto guns, shotguns, fist guns, ranged weapons galore, and then you've got the melee. We've got chain weapons, we've got power weapons, we got shovels, because the Krieg shovel meme will never fucking die, apparently. It's a joy. Weapon variety in Dark Tide is great and pretty much everything is viable. Now yes, there are specific weapons that technically at higher levels are the best for certain situations, but on lower to medium levels, pretty much every weapon will get the job done, which is great for experimentation in Dark Tide. Also, depending on your skill tree, you'll get tons of extra stuff like your special ability, grenades, and in the Psyker's case, magic. Fighting the waves of heretics by your Emperor Blessed weaponry is fun, but you need objectives as well. And these objectives are usually scavenger hunt missions, where you use an auspect to help a servo skull gather information. Servo skulls are uh, the actual skulls of loyal Imperial members, given new life through the machine to help serve the Emperor even after death. 
God, I love this universe so much. Other objectives are pretty simple. It's usually just go here, kill this, move this, find this, repeat until extraction. Nothing too complex. I mean, even a baby Nurgling could figure this stuff out. The main fun of Darktide is killing waves of enemies, which is always the most fun thing in this game. And let me tell you, these horde shooters are some of the most fun you can have with a competent, nice team. Most of the people I play with in Darktide are usually very nice, casual players who know what they're doing, and it makes fighting chaos so much fun. Being back to back with your squad, jumping in all together to melee a bunch of dudes, performing a last desperate push to save a down member because I don't leave any man behind. Darktide's player base doesn't seem to take the game too seriously, but just seriously enough that you will get the mission done and it will be intense and fun as you play through each and every single area. After every match, I feel a rush of accomplishment. I, I couldn't play this game with bots. It's actually just way more fun with real people squad members. Also, after each mission, you'll get the usual stuff, experience, new weapons, uh, all that fun stuff. And then you can go to Hadron, my uh, favorite ad mech gilf, and you can do all the cool weapon upgrading. The last thing I want to talk about with this game is the art direction and attention to detail. We already briefly talked about Darktide's world, but there's so much life breathed into this game, and I think this is really what makes the game so enjoyable. Your team will banter during combat, and all the voice acting is absolutely fantastic. Also, I don't know where Warhammer devs find the most cold-blooded female voice actors to play the women in these games, but oh my god, every Warhammer VA in this game is absolutely bloodthirsty in the best way. Especially the Preacher's female voice actor. Oh my god, she is going crazy. The Ogren's VAs also do a stellar job. These big idiots have some of the funniest lines in the entire game, and playing with Ogren's is always so much fun. But it's not just your characters that have fantastic voice acting. Enemies are also incredibly well voice acted. A lot of them screaming insults at you, you know, saying the classic stuff like death to the false emperor, death to the emperor, the Imperium will fall. You know, all that, you know, crazy liberal shit that they want to say to you. Enemies that don't speak like Poxwalkers or Plague Ogrins just have these disgusting bellowing cries and these horrible sloshing sounds because... You know, it's Nurgle, so every single noise that these things have to make have to make you want to vomit. The demon host's mumblings makes me shiver every single time. The amount of blood and gore on the screen is amazing. It will never get old just slicing a dude in half with the Eviscerator Chainsword. Killing enemies in this game is so satisfying. Every kill, from the smallest Poxwalker to the biggest Chaos Ogren, is a blast. Now this game isn't perfect, no game is. Most of my issues with Darktide comes from frame rate, and I don't know if it's just because my GPU is getting kind of old, or it's just the game likes to chug. And from reading reviews, it seems like it's a pretty common problem for a lot of people that this game just has pretty bad frame rate issues. Progression with skill trees also feels really great with the new update, but weapon progression feels a little lackluster, and the whole weapon upgrading system with Hadron, the best admech gilf, feels very bland and unfun. Sometimes the game also has weird enemy spawns. It's very noticeable with the demon host, as sometimes the game spawns it behind a corner and your ogren accidentally charges into it, causing a wipe. But the game is in a much better state than it was at launch. There's a lot to still like about Darktide, and when it comes to 40k games, it stands above the crowd. And let me tell you, no amount of frame rate issues can stop me purging in the name of the God Emperor. Thank you all for watching this uh, Warhammer Darktide video. This one was a lot of fun. Darktide is a pretty simple game to go over. I mean, you play a crazy zealot with a giant chainsword, and you run around and you smash cultists in the face. Warhammer is just such a fun universe to get lost in. Um, but the next video will be the new Sun Lore video, and then after that it will be the official Kenshi video. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like Warhammer and you like horde shooters, get, tar get Dark Tide. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. I will see you all next time. Goodbye!